I think increasingly, you've read some of the Ponces by Pascal. Yes, love them. Yeah, increasingly it feels like he's the apostle of modern times. Ah. Um, and I think that would have worked with me when I was in my ag agnostic days. Mm. If someone would have, have had have come to me and went, what if it's true? Like mm -hmm. just, like, what if we just pretend it's true? Mm. What would that be like? Would you want it to be true? And if it is true, then presumably you could try it. Mm -hmm. And if it's not true, well, who cares? Yeah, You can just talk to yourself and call that prayer and whatever. But if it is true and you live as if it isn't, that seems more embarrassing mm -hmm. ultimately. So maybe try to just try to do it. Like try to entrust yourself to the good Jesus mm. who the Christians say love you. Mm -hmm. What if that was, you know, something like that, I think. Um, I think when it comes on too strong, our defenses go up. Mm. And maybe there's times for that. But I, I just think it'll, like modern skeptical man. Yeah. I like talking about it this way. Like children don't need to understand snow in order to play in it. And I don't need to understand prayer or the kindness of Jesus or how God can possibly be aware of me right now, my parents right now in Australia, when I can't be aware of my four children at the same time. Mm. It's like I try to understand him through me <laughs> as if he were made in my image. But I don't need to figure that out. Mm -hmm. It's like I think the only way God could be present to me is the way a man is present to a hive of bees. He doesn't know all of them. He's just somehow sees them as a sort of collective. But there's something about, okay, don't even try because mm. he's apparently infinite according to the Christians. And instead, just sur just surrender to him. I give you my life. I give you mm -hmm. all that I'm worried about. And I trust in you. I trust in you, Jesus. And I think inviting people to do that, to entrust themselves to the beautiful heart of Jesus and not try to understand it and just to see what happens, mm -hmm. you know, because even if Christianity is not true, if that works, oh, that's all right. Like, just just do that. It's, it's wild to think that at the end of the day, when we die, if the Christians are right, mm -hmm. then the atheists and Christians will know that the Christians were right. Mm -hmm. But if the atheists were yeah. right, the atheists and the Christians won't know the Christians were wrong. Right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Which is, I know that's a kind of skeptical, low bar way of stating things. But I, it is interesting, and I think it's it helps. I think it resonates with the skeptical person. Maybe. Yeah, I, I love what you're saying, and and Pascal's wager, the way you're kind of teasing it out to me, it, it it's just a sensible way to live in light of the fact that we're not infinite, we don't know everything, and I like to to take this, you know, looking down the road at each alternative. Suppose someone watching this video is fifty percent in each direction between Christianity and mm -hmm. an agnosticism or something yep. like this. And to encourage them to look down the road and just consider the full implications of both, just kind of like you're saying. And it is hard to take in how stark the contrast is. It seems to me, and we need to do a lot of work to fully build this case, but if you look down the road with, with atheism, let's suppose there is no God. Mm -hmm. It is hard to state how, how dark that is, uh, it, what it means for our human nature, for love, for the way that I feel about my kids. So that's one of the most important things in my life that feeling of love I have for them. When I think about if that's reductively explained by evolutionary psychology, basically I feel this way because it helped animals survive in my animal ancestry, and that's it. And there's nothing more. And if I really try to live on that basis, I do find it dehumanizing. I do find it, it, it tears away everything that I think gives life value and meaning and hope. But then you look down the other tunnel and you say okay what if it is true even if someone watching this is only five percent open mm. that still might make you at least want to keep exploring to see because of all that's at stake because like we said eternal life you know i i think the christian view of the afterlife the a pastor named tim keller used to talk about the idea of resurrection as it's not just life after life it's the best possible form of afterlife because implicit in this idea of a, a Christian afterlife is that for those in Christ, actually evil will serve unto greater glory and joy. And the suffering that we have endured in this life mm -hmm. will somehow not just end, but result in some happy achievement in heaven. Mm -hmm. And 
that is so thrilling to me. Uh, you think of Jesus, the body of Christ in heaven right now mm -hmm. with the scars still on it. Mm -hmm. So he's still got these holes in his wrists and ankles and uh, he'll have those for eternity, presumably. And so the suffering he went through has achieved something that has, is turned to glory. And I, I think that's true for every Christian. When we get to heaven, our suffering won't just be over. Somehow we'll see what we in, endured for Christ will have accomplished something we couldn't fully have anticipated. So if I'm looking down the road at these options, and I look down this road, if we can help our friends to see the beauty and the enchantment of it, I don't think that automatically settles every question. I just feel for me and in my experience of evangelism, it's a big piece of the pie. Yeah, I think that's right. And also at the end of the, the day, I would rather be wrong with Paul, Thomas Aquinas and Timothy Keller mm -hmm. than right <laughs> with Nietzsche and Dawkins, mm -hmm. which might sound like uh, intellectual submission or something like I've just given up on the case for God, but that's not it. That's not it. When I look at arguments for God mm -hmm. and I find and I look at arguments for atheism, uh, I definitely feel like atheism gets swamped. Mm -hmm. But I might be different in this case. I don't find any particular argument for God terribly convincing. Uh, any more than I find arguments for why I have free will terribly mm -hmm. motivating or convincing, hmm. or arguments for why the external world is real terribly convincing. You know, or you know, think of Hume, um, who denied the self as traditionally understood. Suppose I read him and I come to doubt that even even Descartes was wrong, you know, and, and maybe the self isn't what we had thought it was. If you gave me an argument for why I exist, you know, I go, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. But, but once I stop reading the argument, I'm no longer gripped by it. But mm. I go on believing in free will. I go on believing in the self and I go on believing in God. I don't know. I just, what am I trying to say? I don't know. I, I think I'm trying to say that I don't believe in God because of arguments any more than I believe in free will because of arguments. But if you were to line up the arguments side by side, I don't think the arguments for atheism are intellectually convincing. Right. Whenever I find atheism convincing in the sense that I feel like it's somehow like drawing me into its orbit or imposing itself upon me, it's because of the vibes, the vibe of atheism. Yeah. This like, yeah. where is this God? Yeah. Like, what, what is heaven exactly? Where mm -hmm. is that? Mm -hmm. And as I start thinking about it, it can seem silly. Like mm -hmm. you just talked about the body of Christ in heaven with scars. Like, what the hell are you talking about? Mm -hmm. There's a part of me, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, what, what, does this, what does it even mean? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and um, at that point, I, I like to think of an analogy that Dr. Peter Kraft gave me just the other uh, recently on the show. He said that asking, is there life after death, mm -hmm. is like two uh, unborn babies in the womb saying, mm -hmm. do you think there's life after the womb? Mm. And one says, no, I don't think so. I think this is, this is the only life we've got. <laughs> What about you? And he says, yes, I do. And he said, well, what do you think it's like? And he said, well, I think it'd be a lot larger, you know, maybe warmer, more of a springy kind of cord attached to us or something. Mm -hmm. Like the baby has no clue mm -hmm. what life after the womb could possibly be like, mm -hmm. uh, nor does he realize that he's there now in the sense that heaven will be somehow an extension of this. And so that, that kind of an analogy helps me to think, yeah, because sometimes it's like the more specific you get about heaven, you know, with the, even in your head, like golden streets and things like this. Mm -hmm. You're like, that sounds stupid. That mm -hmm. sounds like, forgive me, right? You think, you think you know what I'm saying. Some people are going to be terribly offended by that. No, no. And they will tell us. It <laughs> sounds, there's a part of me that's like, that just sounds ridiculous. It sounds yeah. like something someone obviously made up mm -hmm. to make people conform, to yeah. behave. Yeah. Same with hell. My experience is very similar to yours in terms of the role of arguments uh, I don't believe because of arguments. It, the honest truth is, I think I believe in Christianity because of something I can't fully articulate. It's just this deep existential reality that's kind of right in there with my conscience somewhere, mm -hmm. but I can't fully put words to it. But I will say, I went through two seasons of working through doubts about my faith, and each time the arguments were nourishing. Yeah, They helped stabilize me, like walking up a steep staircase you have a, a railing you can hold on to. Um, it, they're helpful. And so I, I don't have this all worked out in my mind. I, I know these arguments can play a role, but they don't. To me, they get to probability. 
And then what closes the gap is this more existential thing that the Holy Spirit is doing that I can't fully articulate that gets me from like 65% or 85%, depending on which day, to the 100%. Because there is a kind of certainty in my heart Mm -hmm. that I can't fully articulate, like the way I know that I love my wife. Mm -hmm. But I I cannot prove that, and it's not an argument that gets to the certainty, but the arguments have a role and they do something. And like you, the problem of evil comes along and it creates this sort of storm clouds in that remaining probability space. And you sort of have to work through that. That's why I have great compassion for people who go through seasons of the dark night of the soul where they're working through doubts and so forth. And sometimes the rest of us don't always help people when they're in that place. That's, that's a scary thing that sometimes Christians go through. Hey, thank you so much for watching. Before you go, do us a favor, leave a comment, let us know what you thought of the video, like and subscribe.